Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on June 20th, 2022. Welcome to another Surviving Day on the Planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, as well earthquakes and world weather. Looking at the last 48 hours on our sun, we have a quickly building large sunspot right in the Earth-facing position, that bright region right there, and as well a couple other regions firing off C-class solar flares today. So heads up, everybody. No CMEs ejected our way, but definitely the energy has tripled over the last few days. Sunspots, solar activity, looking at the last 48 hours incoming and then outgoing. Yesterday, there were six active sunspots earth-facing, and look at these guys turning out. Highly energetic, and as well, a plasma rope attached to the left-hand side sunspot region there. Another close look here at the regions that we're a little bit concerned about, especially that largely forming sunspot along the equator of our sun. That is the bright region right there. Quick look at multi-spectrum showing all of the Earth's, or sorry, the sun events the last 48 hours. Plasma ropes extending from the surface on both the bottom left, top right, and top left. Quick shout out here to Solar Dynamics Observatory for all of these amazing images and all the fine work that they do keeping these satellites going. Another look here, 193 angstroms, coronal hole building in the northern hemisphere and one in the southern hemisphere, slightly diminished along the equator, but definitely keeping an eye on our active sun now. We're in solar cycle 25, and the amount of sunspots is a lot more than expected. Looking at our solar x-ray flux for the past 24 hours, look at that. We're looking at about four C-class solar flares and about five or six B-class flares. Geomagnetic activity remains slightly elevated, still sitting up over 500 kilometers per second. Long duration solar flares. Having a look at the last seven days, and that was our last largest event that was the X-class solar flare. Luckily, that was not in an Earth-facing position. But another quick look here. One of the largest events we've seen coming off the sun in solar cycle 25. And then another halo CME there. So this is the past week from the 13th till June 20th. Huge stream shooting out the north part of the sun as well the south and incoming sunspot regions there and most recent see me ejected. This is Lasco 2 showing the images of our sun with that disk in front so that we can see where the energies are going. Having a look at a real-time solar wind, we're sitting at 518 kilometers per second after being jacked up to 623 today. That's right, 623 kilometers per second. ISPA Space Prediction Spiral showing a small CME taking off towards Mercury, which is the orange circled planet there. Schumann Resonance for today, a power of 22. Definitely static across the globe with these long duration flares that are happening. Amplitude of 22, quality of 7.2, and a power of 14. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours, as it's been pretty busy. We're sitting up over 300 earthquakes across the USGS map. We're going to start out here with the largest recorded in the last 24 hours. 5.9, Hulien City, Taiwan, and that originally came in as a 6.0. And we were expecting a larger shallower earthquake to follow, but I don't think it's over yet. Saw a couple aftershocks through the region, 4.2 and 5.2. But the West Ring of Fire, Pacific, Northwest Pacific, definitely activating here. 
That's a rare place for an earthquake in northern Japan islands. As well, Nano Japan, 4.9. Shikatan, Russia, 58 kilometer deep earthquake there. 4.6 earthquake here at Tabilo, Indonesia, 161 kilometer depth. And then we get over to Port Vila, Vanuatu, 5.4. And some pretty deep earthquakes to report, 584 kilometer depth, 4.4, as well 566. And there was just another one south of these two, heading southward towards New Zealand. So heads up New Zealand, we could have a Kermadec Island activation. Looking across Eurasian Plate, Turkmenistan with a 4.6. Last night here, 5.0 in Fry, Greece. And as well, reporting today, a 4.1 in a mega, megapole, Greece. And as well, no, that's not the Alaskan Peninsula. No, that is Georgetown. That's right, St. Helens, 4.9, 10 kilometer depth. And then heading southward here to the South Sandwich Islands, 5.2, 77 kilometer depth. As well, just southward there with a 4.8. Way too quiet, South America. Most recent was a 4.4, Abraparpa, Argentina. Pretty deep as well. And way too quiet here, folks. Way too quiet. Normally, we have lots of earthquakes, Caribbean, and at least something through the region. So, heads up. We could see a big one coming here. Across the North American plate, reporting a 4.5 here. St. Pierre, off the coast of Nova Scotia and Newfoundland off the Atlantic provinces there. A pretty rare earthquake. I haven't seen one there reported in my past five years reporting here with daily events worldwide. And looking across the United States, we do have an earthquake swarm to talk about as well. South of Mono Lake, Mammoth Lakes is seeing an earthquake swarm right now. Looking at about 53 earthquakes through the region. California, Mammoth Mountain, seeing an earthquake swarm. Other than that, across the U.S., not much to report except for another rare earthquake here in Georgia. Grovetown, Georgia, 2.1 as well. A couple notable earthquakes here in Missouri. And we'll get back to the last 24 hours across the planet. And it give a quick look here at the last seven days. According to USGS and as well, Walton 3D Earthquake app here. Link is in the description if you would like to get this app for your phone or tablet. Definitely a good way to stay aware and prepared. Or you can tune in daily to daily events worldwide. And I do believe we are going to be seeing a large earthquake here. Northern parts of South America up into Central America. With all this pressure building definitely something coming so heads up and then we let's get to weather here looking at satellite imagery across north america pretty deep pacific low heading in off the coastline there ripping up into northwestern parts of the united states and then watch for it to jet quickly towards the montana border so right now over montana you have a pretty intense pacific low and it's being fueled by the jet stream and as well a very strong high pressure ridge here and that's going to be bringing in as well all of that really warm gulf moisture. So heat wave on its way and a lot of moisture across Pacific Northwest right now up into all the prairie provinces. Watch for storms to continue over the next 24, 36 hours. Even Calgary, you've got an extended rainfall warning in the long range forecast. So stay tuned here. Let's give a quick look here. Put it into motion. So Tuesday, it looks like these storms are going to move into Ontario. And then pretty extreme weather across the border here, Canada, U.S., heading up into northwestern parts of Ontario, long range. And then strong winds coupled into the Hudson Bay with another northern low. And then long convergence line stretching from Quebec down into southeastern parts of the United States. Watch for things to really change here over the next couple of weeks. And by the way, happy summer, as tomorrow morning at 5.30 will be officially into summer. Here is your forecast for next week, Thursday into Friday for southern Alberta. But watch for snow 
in higher elevations here. Some pretty cool temperatures will be behind this system as that came straight from northern Alberta. And another one coming in the long range. So by next weekend, that system is going to be heading into Ontario. And then another Colorado low developing there by next weekend as well. And then that's going to follow the convergence line straight up into Ontario for the long range. And then here's your other system heading into Alberta. No major tropical systems to talk about or forecast right now. A couple lows lingering around in the Gulf, but nothing major. Overlooking Africa, no major systems affecting you, except some minor systems through central regions. And then Southeast Asia into India here. You've got days upon days upon days of rain here. A deluge of moisture coming up into Myanmar and parts of northern India into Iraq. Boy, oh boy. We are definitely seeing some changes in our upper atmosphere right now, and it's including a lot of moisture. So yeah, this is not good. As the entitle says, as things are changing drastically across our planet, our winds, earthquakes, we do have one tropical system here in the long range forecast heading up into Korea, but it's not going to form into anything serious. And that was a look at your world weather. Heads up in the long range, could see some pretty intense weather heading through central United States, the long range. But day by day, things are going to heat up and the storms are going to come. Let's have a quick look at our jet stream, see what it's up to. Look at surface level winds, north versus the south. Some pretty large systems spinning around the southern hemisphere right now. Looks like about six large ones. And then versus the north. Now something else I wanted to share with you here is our upper level winds. This is our northern hemisphere right now. A lot of surface level lows spinning around. And then versus the southern hemisphere. And also versus the past couple years. Let's go back to 2021 around this time. Pretty different looking map from la from present. Even let's go back to 2020. Same thing. These changes are evident. And they're happening now, right before our eyes. So heads up, everybody. And I really hope you enjoy all of the daily updates here brought to you by Daily Events Worldwide. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and maybe share with a friend. I'll leave you here looking closely at our upper level winds and our wacky, wacky jet stream. Much love, everybody. Prayers for humanity. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily due. Bye-bye now. Please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.